It's hashtag Baldy's Breakdowns. Brian Baldinger at Baldy NFL, NFL Network, Fox Sports, Compass Media. He's going to be calling the game. And I figure I would do this simultaneously because I, I didn't want to have the same, hey, how you doing conversation with two people who I really enjoy having conversations with. And I figure for the audience who has not heard this conversation before, it's a great chance to have a mini reunion along top of a bigger reunion. It's like a story within a story, like a Mary Shelley Frankenstein story. So on the left, we simultaneously introduce Mr. Brian Baldinger, NFL Network, Fox Sports. He's calling the game Compass Media. And on the right, Brian gets to say, hey, how you doing? Not to me, Aton Shander, but to the one, the only, Mr. Harry Mays. Well, I'm glad you put me on the right rather than the left, Aton. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I know where you're both standing. Harry, what's up, Aton? What's going on? What's going on, Baldy? Doing Doing great, man. And you mentioned these Baldy breakdowns. I'm telling you, I am mesmerized by the Baldy breakdowns on Twitter, on Instagram. I watch them in, you know, every modality possible because <laughs> if you want to really find out what's going on in football, you need to watch the Baldy breakdowns. You've learned so much about the game, the intricacies, the nuance of the game, not the, not the stuff on the surface that any donkey can tell you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I appreciate that, Harry. You got to, you know, it's a complicated game. You got to slow it down to see what really yes, it happens. Is. And, it's difficult. It's difficult to try and grasp it all as a fan watching the TV or even an analyst sitting in the booth and, you know, giving your 12 seconds to talk about it. Yet the Eagles still keep running that play yep. that Baldy has been bemoaning all season long that they never can block properly, yet they still keep running it. Right, Baldy? Well, they do, uh, they do ask these wide receivers to block, you know, linebackers or defense ends that they're in no position to block, and they end up blowing up the play. And at some point, you got to get out of that play. It's just, it's just not going to work, and it leaves the receiver, or, or in some cases, the tight end, frustrated that he can't get to his man. Mm-hmm. Baldy, I'm curious. Before we even look at this game and this weekend on the breakdowns, how much do you put into each one of these clips? Because sometimes, you know, it looks like you're taking full advantage of the maximum upload capacity, right? For <laughs> two minutes or two minutes twenty seconds on I think it's Twitter. Two twenty, right on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but this is. As Harry has mentioned, and you and I have talked on this station and others as well, this is a lot that goes into the film breakdown. But how much are you putting into each one of these clips, man? Well, I mean, you know, it is 140 seconds is what we're sort of uh, maximized at. And sometimes, you know, I want to showcase a player and all the good things that he's doing. I'm kind of run out of time sometimes. But I, I find that 220 for the most part, and, you know, a minute, uh, two minutes, 20 seconds. For the most part, is enough to kind of show something. Most people's attention span doesn't go beyond that. So, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in the film room. I was in there for the last six hours today, uh, just kind of looking ahead to this weekend and some things for fans to look at. But, um, I mean, I spent a lot of time in there each week, uh, you know, 40, 50, 60 hours just on that aspect of it. So, But I enjoy it, so it's something I like to do. Is there anything on the film that you've seen for this game with the Skins and Eagles that jumps out on, on either side of the football in Washington's favor that should concern us here in Philadelphia? Mm. Well, I mean, <laughs> I just think, you know, watching, you know, Josh play and knowing what he could do, I mean, you always have to be concerned about his ability to extend the play and his ability to run. Uh, that in tandem with Adrian Peterson, I mean, you know, I mean, if you stop their running game, you're going to stop the Redskins. But that's, that's kind of how they can move the ball right now. And Adrian Peterson has shown this league um, that on any given play, he can take it to the house. So you better be able to tackle, especially in the secondary. And you better be able to corral Josh Johnson right now because he is a really good athlete. Hey, Baldy, is there something that you notice on film uh, when the Eagles have Nick Foles under center as opposed to Carson Wentz that could, you know, lead us to, to you know, sort of, understanding why this team sort of seems to come alive and they play differently. You know, it, it seems like Doug Peterson calls the game a little bit differently too, you know, as you do with different quarterbacks, but it just seems like he calls it the, more the right way that it should be called when Nick is in there. What do you notice? Well, I think it's pretty much the same plays, to be honest with you, Harry, but I, I mean, you know, obviously, well, not obvious maybe, but I mean, Nick has great deal of faith in Alshon Jeffrey. And his ability to throw the deep ball. I mean, the deep ball is back in business right now. Carson did not have a good season throwing a deep ball. He overthrew a lot of receivers, didn't put the ball in a good position. 
But, you know, Alshon is one of the great jump ball, jump ball catchers in this league. Um, and he has no fear of throwing it into traffic or coverage or anything. He trusts his receivers. And so the deep passing game is alive and well, and they're picking up big chunks right now um, because of Nick. And he is um, just as tough as they come. I mean, he doesn't have the athletic ability that Carson has. He's not as quick. He's not as mobile, but he's every bit as tough. He'll stay in there and take a hit, you know, right from Jadevi and Clowney, right to his chest and make the throw. Um, he's playing as well as he played in that NFC Championship game and Super Bowl game right now. I mean, he's making one elite throw after another right now. All right, let's just say that the Eagles win in Washington, which I think they will. And let's say that uh, the Bears beat the Vikings and knock them out. The Eagles are in the playoffs. Oh, I'd love that. they got to go on the road, obviously, as a wild card team. Um, what do you, how do you think their chances would be of going on the road with Nick Foles uh, and this year's group uh, and, winning, and winning a couple of football games? Well, I think, it, I, I think it's going to be wide open. Um, you know, nobody's going to have to go to New Orleans in the first round. May have to right. go to Chicago, may have to go to Seattle, who knows? I'm not exactly sure how it's going to play out yet. But I, I feel like with the way Nick is playing, the way he played on the road in Los Angeles, the way he played against Houston last week, that, first of all, if there is any sort of decision to be made, if Carson's healthy enough to play, I mean, I wouldn't change quarterbacks. I would ride Nick all the way. Um, you know, and I would say that, you know, I thought Lane Johnson played his best game of the season last week. Uh, against J.J. Watt. He's been playing better, but it was an elite game. It looked like he did in the Pro Bowl. Brandon Brooks, I mean, the, the line played really, really well against uh, Houston last week. Uh, I think that the way Sproles is playing right now and the quickness that he has and his ability to make people miss and finish plays, I would say that they'd have a good chance because offensively they weren't very good until the last three weeks all season long. But right now they're a much better defense. And I think they finally have figured out defensively, um, you know, that their fourth-round pick out of Pittsburgh is a really good corner playing outside, and that's where he belongs. He's a pit bull out Maddox, there. Maddox, yeah. Yeah, and, and so Maddox right now is their best corner, and they have struggled at that position all year. But he is a really good player out there. Brian Baldinger joining us at Baldy NFL on Twitter. All right, I'll take the obvious question about the possible letdown and knowing how well they played as Harry laid out a possible scenario for them and kind of flip it with the guy you just mentioned in Darren Sproles. And, and you've been there. You've been on the field in these trenches. And I would imagine, and I'll defer to you, Baldy, but I would imagine that these guys are conscious and aware that this could be it. Last time they suit up next to a guy like Darren Sproles. And that, that probably helps in a situation, any game, be it importance or playoffs or, or anything to that regard. Well, I think they all, I mean, it's hard not to have a great deal of admiration for Darren Sproles. It doesn't matter where he's been. Um, the Chargers, the Saints, Philadelphia, I mean, he's just, um, he's just an elite person. So I'm sure that the Eagles are going to play it just fast and loose and just have a big smile on their face and realize the same thing you just said. It might be their final game. they got no control over it. The other executives, Joe Douglas, Andy Weidel, I mean, they'll all be watching the scoreboard. I think the Eagles are just going to go out there and just play it hard and play it fun and, and probably enjoy lighting up as many people as they can and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, how, how much are you even watching the scoreboard knowing that you've got a game to win in front of you but also that a lot of it does rely on what's happening with Chicago and also the Rams? Well, I think – I mean, I, I don't think there's a player in the Eagles that's not going to look up at the scoreboard and see what's going on in Minnesota. I mean, I – I mean, they, they, everybody knows the situation. And, you know, everybody in Chicago, Minnesota is going to be looking at Los Angeles and San Francisco. And, you know, if the Rams are blowing out the 49ers, the, the, the Bears are going to take their guys off the field and be content being the number three seed. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, I've never really seen a Week 17 uh, schedule like this where you've got more 4 o'clock games and 1 o'clock games with everything that is important and playoff uh, implications and seeding implications going all the way down to the 17th week. So that, that's the way it is right now. The Bears are going to play hard until there's no reason to play hard, um, and that may f affect the Eagles. So I think they'll be looking at – I think everybody's going to be looking at the Rams 49ers, Vikings Bears, and I think the Eagles will be watching all of it at some point. But really nothing else matters unless they take care of business in Washington. I'm sure that's message number one from Doug Peterson both Saturday night and Sunday morning. 
Hey, Baldy, obviously, uh, well, not obviously, it looks like that Nick Foles is going to be elsewhere next year. I mean, the Eagles have a $20 million, uh, you know, uh, salary cap hit for him if he would, were to stay. You don't pay a backup quarterback, obviously, uh, you know, a one-fourth of that typically, you know, to be a, a really top-level backup. So they either have to redo something or he's got to go somewhere else. There's not a whole lot coming out in the draft this yeah. year as far as quarterbacks, or at least it looks that way at first uh, – brush yeah, Herbert's back in Oregon right he's going to stay at Oregon where he might have been the number one guy um, what do you think would be a good landing spot for Nick Foles because there's going to be a lot of new quarterbacks in a lot of different situations in the NFL next season well I think Howard a lot depends on what happens Sunday I mean if Nick Foles wins helps to win the Eagles game on Sunday and they get to the playoffs and he gets to go on the road in the playoffs and he wins a game He's going to have – he's not going to be Kirk Cousins-type money. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I could see a, a lot more teams jumping in. I could see Jacksonville jumping in. I could see the Giants yeah. jumping in. I could see a lot of teams jumping in and giving them, you know, the opportunity to lead their franchise right now. But I, I think if they get bounced out Sunday or if they do win and uh, they don't get into the playoffs and that's it, the season's over, I, I mean, I think he's going to be a second-tier free agent. I I don't see as many teams that probably need quarterbacks, and I agree. I don't think it's a good draft for quarterbacks. Certainly not Mahomes or Baker or right. Darnold out there, and I don't think it's going to be like that in free agency. I think he's just got to look at the Jacksonvilles of the world or possibly Tampas of the world uh, where there will be changes made at that position and you know, see what kind of offer that is being made. Would he be more desirable around the league than like a Joe Flacco at this point or not? Uh it's hard to say. I mean, I don't think Joe Flacco is going to get $20 million out there from anybody. And I don't think Nick Foles is going to get $20 million. I just don't think that kind of money is going to be available for players at this stage of their careers right now. We've seen Nick Foles go away to St. Louis and Kansas City, and it didn't work out for him. So, I mean, the second time around, and really see what, seeing what Flacco's did over the last – since his Super Bowl win, and with the injuries on top of it, I just don't see those guys, either one being – that $20 million plus dollar quarterback that somebody's going to lay out for. It's such a tight window, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have to find a team that's not willing to sacrifice their record this year, maybe even next year, to get a kid like Herbert coming out. And that's good enough to say, all right, if we get a guy like even Flacco or Foles as our starting quarterback, that's enough to make it to the playoffs. That, that, that's a fine line you really have to walk to identify paying good money for a starting quarterback that's not – a young kid coming out of like a, on a rookie deal. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a big decision. I mean, look, if if Minnesota gets beat on Sunday, I mean the fact that the Vikings in the NFC Championship game paid Kirk Cousins the only guaranteed contract in the history of the NFL, and they don't make the playoffs. I mean, free agent quarterbacks, I think, are going to take a hit. Mm. You know, I mean, here's a guy that was successful in Washington and good stats and all that kind of stuff, and he didn't elevate the team at all. So, I mean, if you look at Case Keenum, I mean. He didn't elevate that team at all this year. Uh, so, I mean, I think teams are going to be very cautious. And then if you look at what Baker's doing to Cleveland, what Patrick Mahomes is doing to Kansas City, I mean, I think these teams, even though it may not be a great draft for quarterbacks, I don't think teams are going to say, you know what, we're just a quarterback away from getting to the playoffs. I mean, I, I don't think after watching what's happened this year and looking at the young quarterbacks develop, that teams are going to think that's the way to go. I think they're going to be affected by this. This is fun. This you know, is great. This is, this is great. All, all we need is, is like Anthony, Vi. Yeah. We we'll drop the temperature in, in the room, and it yeah. you know, feels like old times. A little meat locker. <laughs> you know what else is great? At Baldy NFL on Twitter and, and his Instagram is the Baldy's Walk, which he does before the game when the players are down there in warm-ups. Yeah. And Baldy f gets it filmed, and he's down there in a beautiful suit. Like, you know, a $2,000, $3,000 oh, yes. suit, yeah, right? He's course. got the handkerchief, and he's talking to Patrick Mahomes. He's talking to Philip yeah. Rivers. All the big stars talk to Baldy. It's awesome. Yeah. No, I love doing it, Har. I love doing it. I mean, I, I, I knew that uh, Cleo Mack warms up really early, like four hours before kickoff. Uh-huh. Four uh, hours? And then he disappears. Yeah, four hours. Like <laughs> Where does he go? One, one fifteen kickoff last week. He was on the field at 9.15. But I knew that, so I got to the stadium really early. And it was just me and Khalil down there in the field having a good conversation, you know. But I like, I like talking to these guys and kind of, you know, you see them in a different light game day. And a lot of these guys, they're trying to get into Baldy's breakdowns. They're asking mm -hmm. me how they could get in. I'm like, well, right. look at that. Yeah. Out here. 
you know, and, and don't do something where I'm going to like, you know, paint you out to be the bad guy or the fall guy either. Like, you know, go do something good out there and you, you have a chance. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Two ways you to can make get it. in, yeah. and in multiple ways, yeah, and some of them it is, isn't good. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> a lot well, of people I mean, watching those breakdowns, Baldy. You don't want to be on the wrong reason for it. You don't want to be on the wrong end of it. No, yeah. I mean, I've done that. Before, Absolutely, you know? man. One of the coaches Absolutely. that was on the wrong end of it is is not coaching anymore. So things have turned around in Cleveland, you know. So, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. So it's 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 good to stay on the good side, but you could do that by effort, technique, you know, uh, being you know being a a player out there. That's the best way to get there. All right, last one for me. I'm going to throw the poll question out at you and see what you think. What's more likely to happen? Philadelphia loses to Washington. Minnesota loses to Chicago. The Rams lose to the 49ers. What's least likely to happen? Most likely. Most likely to happen. Uh, I would say most likely to happen is that the Bears would lose to the Vikings. Because hmm. uh, no. it's in Minnesota. That Minnesota yeah. would lose to the Bears. Oh, Minis- oh, oh Minnesota that's would lose to the Bears. Yeah, so so uh, it's right. It's it's the opposite, meaning it's, it's probably going to be Minnesota beating Chicago, which would make Minnesota losing more unlikely. That's why I was trying to pit three I unlikely see. scenarios, and I'm thinking, all right, Philadelphia loses to Washington, Minnesota loses to Chicago, the Rams lose to 49ers. All three would be upsets. Yes. Well, I could see, I could see Minnesota lose. I could also see Minnesota losing to Chicago, though. Good. I mean, I, could, okay. I mean, I just, I think it's going to depend a lot on what's happening out in Los Angeles and when uh, Matt Nagy decides to take his players off the field. Let's hope. Let's hope it's at least in the third quarter or something's good, man. Listen, always a blast. Glad we got to break bread the three of us too on this, on these airwaves, Baldy. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure, Aton and uh, Harry. Good to talk to both you guys, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Happy New Year, Baldy. Happy New Year, brother. Happy holidays. You got it. Brian Baldinger at Baldy NFL, the Baldy Breakdowns.